What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. And in this video, guys, we're going to be doing our character breakdown for Lauren Sheba. Similar to my other character breakdowns, we're going to be running through the move list, doing some combos, and then I'm going to talk about a game plan for Lauren. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started by talking about mobility. As you guys can see, for a character of her size, Lauren's mobility is actually pretty average when we're talking about walk speed. I know people don't really walk in Power Rangers, but I still think that it's worth noting. When we actually get into her dashing and whatnot, this is where she actually becomes very interesting because she's the only character in this game where if you double tap forward and then hold forward, she actually goes into a proper run, as you can see here. And you would think that because of this and because of how quick she moves, that this is her most effective way of moving about the screen quickly. And it is. There's really no reason to wave dash or to attack dash with her because when you attack dash, you only get like the ending portion of her run where she kind of screeches to a halt. And as you guys can see, it doesn't cover a whole lot of distance and it's kind of slow. Comparing that to her wave dash, her wave dash is actually a little bit better because it maintains some of the momentum from her run. But when you compare that to her run, her run is just the way to go. So you don't have to do anything special. Just double tap forward, hold forward, and that is the way you want to move out the screen with Lauren when it comes to dashing forward. Now her back dash is actually pretty average. Um, it takes about three, three dashes in order to get about full screen with her. It is a little slower on the startup and does have a very interesting property that we will actually talk about later when we start getting into special moves. Moving into her aerial mobility, her jumps are pretty average. She doesn't fall too slow, she doesn't fall too fast. She covers a little bit more distance when she's jumping backwards than she does jumping forward. But when we get into her her dash jump, as you can see, her dash jump is much different from like other members of the cast in that she kind of does more of like a hop more than anything else. She doesn't go too far, she doesn't go too high, which can make her very tricky to anti-air. But yeah, this is like more of like a hop, as you guys can see. And this makes her aerial buttons really uh, tricky. It makes her difficult to anti-air because it almost makes them like instant overheads. It can make it a very, very tricky situation to deal with, as you guys can see there. So make sure you guys are careful when you are dealing with Lauren. Moving into normal based attacks, we have standing light here. We have crouching light. This is low, which is good. Okay range. Standing medium. I think this is a, a good button for her when she's at the close to mid range. We have crouching medium. This is her launcher. As you guys can see, it doesn't have a whole lot of range. It actually comes out pretty quick, but it is still an effective anti-air nonetheless. Moving into standing heavy. As you can see, it has a lot of range on it. Almost like Zed. It's like somewhere between a mixture of Zed's medium and his, uh, or his crouching medium and his standing heavy. Her standing heavy is like somewhere right in the middle of that. And this is going to be her most oppressive and one of her main that you're going to be using a lot with Lauren. Moving into her crouching heavy, this is her sweep and it's very interesting. It hits twice and it hits from about the neutral starting position as you guys can see right here. The fact that it hits twice is pretty cool for like, you know, hit confirming situations and it does have decent range, so that is a thing. Moving into her aerial based normals, we have air light here. Now this move is very interesting because you can see how active how active it is whenever you actually do it. Just like the entire way, it's, it's very active. And it also has cross-up opportunities. Moving into her air medium. I like her air medium. It has good range on it. it. You don't have to be like too close to the ground in order to hit it. And this move also has cross-up opportunities as you can see here. Now, moving into her most interesting of her air normals, and that's going to be the way her air heavy works. As you can see, she kind of has an inherent double jump whenever she does it. This can make her, uh, just give her another reason to be a very uh, tricky target to anti-air because she just has a number of ways to alter her air mobility. So make sure you're being careful on that. And it, just like the other ones, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This also has cross-up opportunities. So Lauren is a very rare character in the fact that she actually, all three of her air normals have cross-up opportunities. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention about this normal is the fact that she has this slight double jump whenever she does it can make this move very, very ambiguous as to whether it's going to hit from the front or from the back. So that's just another tool that she kind of has in her belt, as you guys can see. Now, let's go ahead and start talking about her command normal.
Lauren is very unique in that not only does she have two command normals, but her command normals you don't really execute like how you normally would most command normals. Um, most command normals only require you to do like one directional input with a button and then you'll get the unique looking normal based attack. But for Lauren, her inputs are kind of different. The first one that we're actually going to talk about is going to be back, or sorry, it's going to be forward, back, and then light attack. And you'll get this little number here, a retreating slash where cherry blossoms come out. Um, it has decent range, probably about right here-ish. Which is good, but it also has a nifty other kind of property, which I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. It actually reflects projectiles as well. So make sure you guys are keeping that in mind. I don't think it's the most practical way to reflect projectiles, just because of how awkward the input is. It's kind of like not as easy to do on reaction, but just the fact that there's another character in the game that has a normal that reflects projectiles because Goldar is like the only other one. It's just not super, super practical when you compare that to some other options you have for reflecting projectiles, which we'll talk about later on. So a very interesting move. Um, the next move that I want to talk about is going to be back forward with heavy attack. As you guys can see, she'll leap into the air. It does hit twice if you are close enough, but this strike is actually an overhead. So if we actually have Jason crouch for us, we'll have him block everything and we'll have him crouch. As you guys can see, oh, hold on. As you guys can see, you have to stand block this. So it is a true overhead. And those are her two command normals. Now, if you guys are having trouble with these inputs, one thing I recommend that um, I found a little bit easier is hitting the second directional button and the attack button at the same time. I actually find them able to actually get these normals a lot more consistently. So press back and then press forward and heavy attack at the same time to get the overhead strike. And then press forward and then back with light attack in order to get the retreating slash. So you press the, the second directional button and the attack button at the same time. And that pretty much does it for all of Lauren's normal-based attacks. Now, when it comes to the ones you're going to be using the most, it's obviously going to be the standing heavy, just because of the range on it. it really ties into her game plan. But in addition to that, if you are right about, about this range, standing minima is definitely a good button. Its range is a little bit deceptive, but it's still a good poking tool. You don't have to use this all the time. And then, you know, this actually leads into the, he the standing heavy. So that you can actually confirm it into special moves, you know, based off of the situation that you see. As far as her aerial normals go, it's going to be your air medium, and it's going to be your air heavy. These are going to be the ones you're going to be using the most, but don't write off the, the uh, air light. This move is good. Um, it's very active, and it can lead to some very tricky situations as well. Alright, let's go ahead and move into throw. As you can see, it is special cancelable, so that is good. You can actually get some pretty good combos off of that. I found that I've only been able to do them in the corner, but at least it is an option for you. Going into back throw. You can OTG off of that because it does lead into a hard knockdown. Haven't been able to find any combos that I can do um, solely with Lauren off of back throw, but you know, the option is there for you. All right, let's go into EX. Now, this EX is very interesting because it actually comes in two parts very similar to RJ's. The first part is this part. As you can see, it actually does cross up. I wasn't sure if this move actually crosses up, but if she's close to you and she does this, make sure you are walking the other way because this does have an inherent cross up that comes with it. The second part to this is if you press the EX button again, she'll get the follow up, which is like the main part of her EX. And this is actually air okay. Now let's go ahead and move into Super. Very stylish, cool looking Super. As you guys can see at the end there, it does cause a wall bounce, which can lead to combo opportunities. If not from that, if you're close enough to the wall, as you guys have seen in some of my other videos where I've done combos, you can actually OTG with the Flame Corridor. Afterwards, that is uh, one of her two OTGs. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But with the proper timing, you can get the Flame Corridor off the ground and extend combos that way as well. It is tricky, but you can do it. Moving into special moves, let's go ahead and start with Neutral Special. 
as you guys can see, if you just press the special button and then you don't do anything, she will enter a stance and then she will go into the Quadra Slash. This move actually has pretty good range. I kind of equate this to like Zed's Ford with Heavy. As you can see, it has really good range, leads into a wall bounce opportunity. And if you are close enough to the corner, you can follow up with the Flame Corridor. Um, you know, just because you will be close enough. I haven't been able to find anything else I can follow up with with uh, Lorne solely, but I'm sure you can extend it with assist and other things like that. Let's go ahead and move into the second option that you can do from the stance, and that is back, is back special. So if you do special and back special, you will get the Flame Corridor. This is one of her anti-airing moves that ties in very nicely with her zoning. And I do like this move because when she does it, she does it, uh, she does advance forward. So pretty good. Let's go ahead and move into the next option, and that is the Sakura Strike. So if you press special, and then you do board special, you'll get the Sakura Strike. This move is very interesting because the butterflies actually follow you, or they will take the, the, the direction that you give them. So if you advance forward, they will go forward with you. And if you retreat, they will go backwards with you. So very interesting. I think it's a good move to throw out when you're trying to establish some zoning game, which once again, we'll talk about that later. They're not like proper zoning tools, but anyway, a good situation is off of like a hard knockdown situation. So let's say we do like back throw right. That's probably a good situation to use it in. Another good situation is, let's say you want to try and tag in one of your other characters, right? You can go Sakura Strike. And then the butterflies will still follow wherever your lead character goes, so it definitely gives them some cover when they're on their way in. So definitely good options for the Sakura Strike. All right, let's go ahead and move into the next special move. Let's go ahead and move into Forward Special. Forward Special gives her the Samurai Fire, or I just call it the Flame Carpet. Now the Flame Carpet is actually pretty interesting because um, it is her other off the ground hitting move. But as you guys can see, after you hit somebody with it, it still kind of stays on the, the field for a little while, right? Now, another interesting property of this is it actually interacts very well with your Crouching Heavy. As you can see, you can actually strike the Flame Carpet with your Crouching Heavy, which actually pushes it across the screen, and if it collides with your opponent, it leads to a crumble state for some really easy com combo follow-ups. The butterflies that do come out of it actually do have a hitbox as well, so it kind of creates like a nice wall so your opponent can't get in on you so, so easily. And this also applies to, like, if you hit your opponent with it, when it stays on the ground like that, you can actually still strike it, and, like, the butterflies will still come out. So even after you get the initial hits off of it, it still has a hitbox if you interact with it in that way. So the flame carpet is definitely pretty, pretty cool. Now, let's go ahead and move into her back special. Her back special puts her into this very interesting retreating stance that not only is invincible on the back dash, but it also reflects projectiles. It's like an all-in-one invincible thingy in certain parts. And as soon as you do it, it'll take her straight into her neutral special, and you can do any of the follow-ups from that. So you can do back special, and then when you see her enter the stance, you can go into like the flame pillar, kind of like this. You can go into her forward special. You can cancel it. So you have a lot of interesting options that kind of tie straight to your neutral special as well. And it really um, is, it gets interesting with her, uh, her zoning game once you actually get there. Now let's go ahead and talk about the invincibility properties of this. As you guys can see, it's one part physically invincible during the back dash, and then it's also one part projectile invincible whenever she actually puts up that shield, right? So we're gonna actually have Jason help us out here. So first, we'll start with some basic projectiles here. As you guys can see there. So as soon as she puts up the barrier, that's the part that's projectile invincible. But when she does the back dash, that's the part that's invincible to like most physical hits. It's actually very similar to Cat's Cartwheel in that regard. Now, let's compare that to physical hits. And I'm going to use a very extreme example here. Pretty cool, right? Now, I don't think you're gonna get too many situations where like your opponent will just randomly throw out super or something like that, and you'll be able to react, react to it in that way, because as you guys can see, unless you just do it preemptively, you kind of have to be you know, pretty far away to see it coming to do it on reaction, but I think it's a nice little tidbit. All right, let's talk about her second most interesting special move, and that is going to be her double jump, and that is her air special. So if you are in the air and you press 
you can press just special, you can press forward with special, you can press back with special. This is yet another layer to her air mobility, which makes her really tricky to deal with. Because you can do things like striking somebody on one side with a normal, like a, like a cross-up normal, like this, and then you can just go backwards. Kind of like that, and you can just do all manner of crazy things like that. And remember that one interesting property I told you about her back dash? Her back dash actually counts as her being airborne, so you can actually do her double jump out of her air, out of her back dash as well. Pretty cool, because let's say that you're you get like another hard knockdown situation, and your opponent is gonna press a button on wake up or something like that. You can just do back dash into forwards into a special and forward to air special forward. And you can just like clip them with something like that. You can use it to bait throws for people who have stubby EXs. You can use it to bait those too and get some pretty easy follow-ups from that as well. And that's pretty much gonna do it for all of Lauren's special moves. Moving into combos, we have auto combo number one with lights, auto combo number two with mediums, and auto combo number three with heavies. Now you guys may notice that her light and medium auto combos actually look very similar to her command normals, or at least parts of them do, and that's because they literally, that's what they are. You'll notice that that one looks like her light command normal. And you'll notice that the medium auto combo, the last part of it there, is like her heavy command normal. Now, the heavy auto combo, or sorry, the medium auto combo maintains the overhead properties of her heavy command normal. So that actually makes this auto combo pretty tricky because it actually goes from a low into an overhead. But there is something that I do want you guys to actually be aware of with this auto combo. There actually is a gap in between it. As you can see there, Jason actually does put his guard down. So you can actually take that opportunity if you're looking for it, fighting against other Lorns to actually do like an EX if you have the meter available or something along those lines. And then of course we have the heavy auto combo. This is going to be really important for a lot of um, Lorne's combo structure. As you can see, it leads into a stagger state, so you definitely want to be able to take advantage of that. So let's move into some actual combos. I'm gonna start with a pretty easy combo. What you guys are gonna to wanna to do is anything that goes into her standing medium and then into her heavy auto combo. This is gonna be the main way that you guys get your combo started with Lauren. So for instance, you can do an air um, medium heavy and then go straight into her standing medium and then into heavy auto combo. After that, depending on where they are on the screen, you'll wanna run up to them and then you'll do medium auto combo. As you can see, it leads into a ground bounce. From there, we can follow up with a crouching light and do the first three hits of the medium auto combo. And then when you see that third hit, like when she rises up, you can go ahead and go into EX from there. So this whole combo should look a little something like this. Make sure you guys, that if you're in the corner, you delay the super a little bit. Because if you do it too early, like right after the EEX, then the projectile where the actual super is, this thing right here, it won't connect. Because that's the actual hitbox for the super. So just a helpful tidbit for you. All right, let's move into our intermediate combo. So once again, start is gonna be the same. We're going to run up to our opponent, but then from here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to do a standing medium into our crouching medium for the launcher. From there, we'll proceed into our staircase combo, where we'll do a staggered air light medium. We'll be able to jump back up again, and then we'll do air light medium heavy. That is not staggered, you just do it. So all together, you'll have something that kind of looks like this so far. Now, after you get that ground bounce, what you want to do is do a standing medium, standing heavy, crouching heavy, and then go into EX from there. And then remember that the EX on the ground has a second part you do, so hit EX again, and then you'll get the follow-up. And then we can go into super from there. So this combo should look a little something like this. I guess we're going this way. Samurai 
Now, because they're outside the corner, you can actually do super a little bit quicker than you normally would if you were inside the corner. You still have to wait for a teeny tiny bit, but just not nearly as long, and you'll get your intermediate combo. Let's start moving into our advanced combos now. So this first combo that I'm going to show you guys is what you're going to do if by time you do the heavy auto combo, you are in the corner. So you're going to start with your basic jump in, of course. Medium and heavy auto combo. The next thing you want to want to do is you'll run up and do standing medium, launcher, cancel into forward special for samurai fire. After that, you'll have enough time to do another standing medium into launcher. And then from there, we'll proceed into our staircase combo. But we're going to do it a little bit different than we did in the intermediate combo. But let's go ahead and just see what we have right now. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. Now, this staircase combo is going to be a little bit on the faster side compared to how you do it with some other characters. The reason being is that you want them kind of high up whenever you do that second launcher, because from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into, like, you know, double jump combos. So what you'll do is a staggered air light medium, jump back up, we'll do air light medium, but we will not stagger it. And then after you do that medium, what you're going to want to do is press forward and then special. So you'll jump up towards your opponent for the next part of this combo. And then after that, you will do an air light medium heavy for the ground bounce. This is going to be the first part of this combo that you'll really want to practice if you're not really used to doing like double jump cancel style of, of combos, just doing this. And my advice to you is just get used to the second part of the combo. Get used to doing the medium, and then canceling that into forward special, and then into the air light. So at this point, we should have something that kind of looks like this. So that's the first part that you guys want to get get used to. Now, here is the second part that's a little difficult, and this is where her special cancel start to come in. So what you're going to want to do is when you come back down to the ground, you'll want to do a standing medium, crouching heavy, and then after the crouching heavy, you'll want to do special special. And you'll want to get used to that, letting like both hits hit, and then going to the special cancel. From there, we'll be able to sneak in a crouching light. Just like that. And then we'll be able to do another crouching heavy after that. And we can do that about three times. So you'll see her do this three times. And then on the third time, you'll do a crouching light into the first three hits of your medium auto combo. And then into EX and super. So once again, make sure you guys are practicing the double jump part of the combo. And then you're practicing those loops. Then altogether, you should have something that kind of looks like this. All right, let's go ahead and move into our next combo. Now, this combo is going to be a little bit of a doozy. It's going to have multiple parts in it that you need to practice, but let's go ahead and just get started with the first part. We're going to do our usual opener. Just like that. And then the next thing that we'll do is we can run up and then do light auto combo. She'll recover in enough time for you to do her command normal of forward, back, and then light attack. And as I mentioned before, I find it easier that when I press the second directional button that I hit the attack button at the same time, and I'll actually get it much easier. 
So basically you get this. That's the first part that you're gonna wanna practice. Now, after you do that command normal, you'll be able to do standing heavy into special. So at this point you have Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is practice getting the OTG Flame Corridor, which we do with Special and then Back Special. This is something that's very difficult to do. The reason why is because if you do it too early, it either won't come out or you might get Back Special, which we don't want. Or if you do it too late, because, of, because this takes some time to start up, your opponent will just get up, they'll block it, and then they can punish you and just go into a combo of their own. So that is the second thing that you're going to want to practice. So doing Quadra Slash into the Flame Corridor. After that, you will have enough time to run up and do Standing Medium into Standing Heavy, Crouching Heavy, and then as soon as you do that Crouching Heavy, another Quadra Slash. So the next thing you'll want to practice is doing Flame Corridor and then running up and getting that medium. And after that, you'll go into heavy, crouching heavy, and no project slash. Make sure that both of those hit. So after flame corridor, we get something that looks like this. Just like that. Now, because we already got our ground bounce in that situation, they'll lead to a hard knockdown. The dash forward is very important because by the time the combo ends, you want to be about right here so that when you do the second flame corridor, it actually hits. From here, we'll do standing medium, crouching heavy, special, and then press special again to cancel. And then just like the last combo, we'll finish up with our crouching light into the first three hits of medium auto combo. And then we'll be able to go into super from there. So altogether, you should have something that kind of looks like this. And that's pretty much how that combo goes. Now, the next combo that I want to show you guys is what you can do off of forward throw. Now, this combo isn't very reliable when you're outside the corner, but inside the corner, you can actually cancel her forward throw into the quadra slash, and then you can just do the last combo we did, you know, just in the, in the same way. It has all the same inputs. So, for near the corner, we can get this. Now, as you guys noticed, I did have to compensate there a little bit. I didn't dash far enough forward after I got the, OT the first OTG Flame Corridor, so I had to dash forward on the second one so I could make sure to hit that Flame Corridor. That, it's very difficult to dash forward and then do special back special, but I was actually able to get it that time. It's much easier just to make sure you're getting enough of a distance when you're dashing when you hit the first Flame Corridor, so you don't have to worry about doing that. That way you can just focus on doing the second Flame Corridor into the rest of the combo. And that'll pretty much do it for all the combos that I'm going to show you guys in this character breakdown. Let's go ahead and move into Lorne's game plan. And if you haven't figured it out by now, then I'm honestly not surprised because Lorne doesn't really have a set in stone game plan like some other characters. But I have a couple of theories about how she plays based off my time with her. And she's going to be three different parts. Number one, the most obvious, is that she's a mid to long range fighter because of this. She's not as far back as Zed is. Like, he's, she's not going to fight from all the way back here. But this area right here is pretty much going to be where she, she shines. This is kind of where she wants to keep you. Between harassing you with her standing heavy, between her flame carpet, and between her butterflies and whatnot, and making you want to jump in, and then you can, like, catch them with the flame corridor, this is kind of the area that she wants to fight from. So 
that's the first part of her game plan that I think. The second part is that I think that honestly, she's she is a zoner, but not in a traditional sense. Once again, this is where she wants to keep you, but because her projectiles aren't very, you know, straightforward, I believe that she's more of a counter zoner. Now, for those of you who don't know what a counter zoner is, what I'm referring to is basically this, this shield. This allows her to absorb incoming projectiles. She can redirect those projectiles, and then she uses that momentum in order to get her own zoning game started. Not specifically with her projectiles and everything, but with all the tools that she has to offer. Between her flame carpet, between her butterflies, and between her standing heavy. Whenever you see projectiles coming towards you, you can repel them with the back special, and then you can just go straight into your own projectiles, which you can use to either just like zone out your opponent, or you can use them in order to attempt to get in and get her third game plan started, which is her aerial mobility. Because of her double jump and because of how her air heavy works, this can make her super, super ambiguous and the fact that her dash jump is more of a hop. That means that you can mix up how you choose to approach your opponent with her double jumps any way you like. You can do like a light into a double jump into a medium. You can do like medium heavy into like another one as you guys can see there. You can do like empty jump lows and like going to throw. So her aerial mobility is is very, very varied, and because of how shallow her dash jump is and the fact that you can like follow people in with your assortment of projectiles, like your butterflies. Fuck like this, right? It definitely makes her a pain to deal with when she's in the air. But yeah, traditionally, this is where you're gonna wanna be. It's really effective for her, just because whenever she does a string, you can basically go into an invincible special, and then based off of where it puts you, you can decide what you want to do. If you're in this area, you probably don't want to go for like a soccer strike or something because your opponent will have enough time to come up and hit you right before you actually get it off. That's happened to me a number of times. But one neat thing you can do is work in your cancels and just peg them before they run in. You can see them run in and then go for like a medium into heavy. You can just do into quad or slash. Or let's say you're at this range, right, and you do a standing heavy. This would be a good range where you actually want to start going into like your, your zoning. You can do heavy back special, Sakura strike, throw out the flame carpet, do it again, and then go in. And that's kind of how it works. One neat property, as you guys have noticed, or maybe you haven't noticed, but when she strikes the flame carpet with her crouching heavy, this counts as her actually connecting with something, so it allows her to cancel into her other special moves. I think it's actually a pretty cool uh, little feature. So let's say we can something like this, or like in the back special like you saw. So once again, in overview, you have the aerial mix-up monster, you have the counter zoning properties coming from her back special, and then you have her general mid to long range that she kind of likes to stay in. And if you guys can master those, then I think you'll be doing pretty good with Lauren. And that, guys, will do it for this character breakdown featuring Lauren. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys having fun with her? How good do you think she is? I'd love to know your opinions, and I'll be back to you later with future videos. This is Parker Lad, and I will see you guys next time.